Welcome to PennyCart. My name is Jaden, and in today's video, we're going to go over components. This includes using attributes on your product page and creating your bag, cart, and checkout pages using our foundational building blocks for your Webflow store. Let's go through how to link your Webflow CMS product page with PennyCart using attributes and the PennyCart Webflow app. So first thing, we have our Webflow product page built in, on our CMS. We're going to make our way over to our apps panel, and we're going to open up PennyCart. At the very top, we have our product page, so we're going to open that up. And inside here, we have our whole list of attributes, both optional and required, which are indicated with the heading beside the name. And these are all of the different options that we have for our product page. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start applying all of these attributes. And in order to apply them, what I'm going to do is select, for instance, my product name. Then I'm going to make, go back to the Webflow app, select the product name. And in the top right, we can see that the attribute was applied successfully. We are also in the settings panel and we can see that the attribute was applied there as well. Now we can go through the process of adding all of the different elements and attributes that we need. So I'm going to find product price, apply this attribute. Product quantity refers to the form input. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Our product SKU. Scrolling down, we have our add to cart button. And then we have our add to cart form, which is our last required element. But we're going to go ahead and validate without applying that. Now this validation process checks the entire page to make sure that all of the elements have the attributes that they need. And if there are missing any, it'll let us know. Awesome, so we went through and validated our page and we can see that most of the ones that we need are added, but we can see our add to cart form has the indicator of an X, meaning we still need to add that. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna find my form block and then add it, the attribute. I'm gonna validate one more time to make sure everything is working as we need. And that's all, all the steps we need to do for our product page. Now we can see that the add to cart form is added, all of the required attributes are on the page and we're good to go. Let's go through the process of setting up your bag page using the penny cart components. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our way over to your penny cart generated bag page. And then I'm gonna open up the penny cart app. At the very bottom we have our components. Now we have the option of a pop-up bag or a top right bag. I'm going to go ahead and use the pop-up bag. I'm going to press copy. Then I'm going to close the app. And I'm going to paste in my bag. Once the bag component is pasted in, you can customize and style it to match your brand's look and feel. I'm going to do that now. Because we pasted in this component directly from the PennyCart app, all of the attributes are already added, so we don't need to worry about the functionality. And now that I've designed it to look and feel how I want, I'm going to open up the PennyCart app one more time, make my way down to components, and now every single time you want to adjust the bag's design, you'll need to find this publish button down below and you're gonna have to press that. It doesn't matter which publish button you press, whether you use the pop-up or the top right, you just need to make sure that you publish it anytime you wanna make adjustments to the overall design. Awesome, now that that's published, we can close the app and our bag page is ready to go. Let's go through creating your cart page using some of our pre-made components. So the first step is I'm gonna make my way over to the penny cart cart page. And then I'm going to start to add in some of the layout and structure that we need before we add in the components. So first I'm going to add in a tip block. I'm going to give this a class of wrapper. And then I'm going to add in my nav bar. Awesome. And I'm going to add in another tip block with a class of main wrapper. And inside this tip block, I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to give this a class of section underscore cart. Inside this cart, I'm going to add a padding global. And attach padding section large to it as well. Inside padding global, I'm gonna add container large, another div block. And inside the container large, I'm gonna have a div and give this a class of two grid. Now what this does is it just creates a two by one grid for me. So two row columns and one row. And inside this, I'm gonna add a div block. And I'm gonna give this a class of cart underscore products. And beside it, I'm gonna add another div block. I'm gonna give this a class of cart underscore summary. Perfect. Now once I have that basic structure set up for how I'm looking for, I'm gonna select the cart products and I'm gonna open up the PennyCart app. Now at the very bottom, we have our components. I'm gonna scroll down until I get to cart components. Now we have products and order summary. These are the two main components in order to make the cart page work. So I'm gonna select products. I'm gonna paste that into cart underscore products. I'm gonna do the same with order summary and cart underscore summary. Perfect, so that's all of the components that we needed to add onto the cart page, but now we have the opportunity to go in and style and kind of make it match your brand a little bit more. 
For example, my navigation comes down, you can see it starts to cut things off as we have a black animation that kind of goes on the background. So I'm gonna add in some more padding. So for a section cart, I'm just gonna add in, actually, no, I'm gonna add in a spacer. So add a dip block, make it a class of spacer large. I'm gonna bring this above the container. Now we kind of have enough space to, to work with here. Okay, great. So now, as we can see, if we hover on different elements and adjust things, the style isn't quite matching. There's a lot of red. We have this kind of neon green going on for this client. So I'm going to restyle this to make it match the brand's color a little bit better. Now that we've styled the cart page to look and match our brand's feel, we don't need to do any further actions as all of the attributes are already pre-applied as we've copied it directly from the Penny Cart app. So your cart page is ready to go. Let's go through setting up your Penny Cart checkout page using our components. So first off, I'm on the Penny Cart checkout page, which the app automatically created. And I've set up a little bit of the typical layout that we would have using our main wrapper, our section, padding global, and a container. And inside there, I just have a div block. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this div block a class of checkout grid. And this is gonna house all of our checkout information. So I'm gonna go ahead and select grid, give this a column of two, row of one. And I'm gonna give it a gap of four rems. Now that that's done, I'm gonna create a div inside that grid. I'm gonna name this checkout info. Inside checkout info, I'm gonna open up the Penny Cart app, and then we're gonna go down to components. And at the very bottom, we have our checkout components. First, we're gonna copy in our billing and shipping and paste that into our checkout info wrapper. Then at the very bottom, we also have our payment. We're gonna copy that, and we're gonna do the same thing and put that underneath our billing and shipping. Awesome. Then we also have order status, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in as well. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go back to our grid. I'm gonna add in another div block and I'm gonna name this Checkout Summary. With the Penny Cart app still open, I'm gonna copy in the order summary, paste that into the summary wrapper, find our product list, and then paste that in there as well. Now if we do a quick preview, we can see that all of the components are in, although the right-hand side needs to be sticky, but we have all of the key information that we need. So let's go ahead and style it sticky so that it kind of makes more sense for the users. So check out summary. I'm gonna find our margin and find the bottle and set that to auto. And then I'm also gonna find the checkout grid and I'm gonna set this from a position to relative. Going back to our summary, we're gonna go and set the position of this to sticky and I'm gonna give it a position at the top of 10%. Now, as we scroll, the checkout will stay with us, but it looks like we need to set this to about 20%. Awesome, now if we preview that, it stays with us on the screen and follows the typical user flow that we would want. Now we can go ahead and style this and make it look how we want. With all of the components coming preset with all of the attributes needed to make your checkout page work, once you've styled the page to make it match your brand's look and feel, your checkout page is now production ready. And that concludes today's video on using our foundational building blocks within the PennyCart app to build your product, bag, cart, and checkout pages on your Webflow store. Thanks for watching and make sure to try Pennycart for free today.